Dick Dastardly and Mutley got a reboot from Garth Ennis? There's a few versions of Dick Dastardly floating around, including the Wacky Races. The one that's getting a reboot and the one that I was familiar with was Dastardly and Mutley and their flying machines, which was about Dick Dastardly and Mutley chasing after a pigeon. It's implied to be World War One, and they're implied to be Germans. You know, they're anti-heroes, so that makes it a proto-Breaking Bad. Anyways, they gave this fairly lighthearted and goofy series to Garth Ennis, who is not known for lightheartedness and goofiness. That's a lie. That's a filthy lie. Garth Ennis on his best days is known for being quite goofy. I would like to point out that his magnum opus preacher can be very goofy and very silly. So it's not really out of the realm of possibilities for him to take on something like this. And yes, his humor is sometimes stuck in, well, if I just say something offensive, that's funny. And yes, that leaks through every once in a while in this, but I'm going to go on a limb. This is pretty fun. This is a pretty fun one. So instead of being vaguely German, they're now definitively American, thus making them heroes. Also, Muttley is a person. Don't worry, that doesn't last long. As they encounter a mysterious drone by the name of Warpig 1, which does this to them, which turns Muttley into a, a, a mutt, Dick and Muttley then go on the run. For a variety of reasons, the main one being that the government has gone blood simple, and is enacting strange cartoon violence on the world around them. But the whole world has gone practically daffy. What can say they've gone almost loony as the president of the United States smashes the head of a senator with a mallet. Big, beautiful cartoon mallet. Can you believe that this creates just a little bit of controversy? So much so that they try and get the president to resign. Listen, this takes place in the modern day and it can't be Nixon, but this guy is Nixon, right? Once again, Nixon is messing with the world of comics. And just before they force Nixon to resign, uh, this happens. The whole world is turning into a cartoon. Heck, there's even a martial arts practicing panda. I've noticed that this is a trend in a lot of comics I've been reading. Like both 8 Billion Genies and All Nighter have this plot of it's a seemingly ordinary world, and then there's some strange wild event that opens the floodgates and world turns into a fantasy. I guess it says something about a lot of creators that they idly imagine some grand event making the world more special. Now, reality is a constant stream of disappointments, but I would argue that all the best things that ever happened to you happened in reality. Sometimes I look at the way the world works and I go like, you know, maybe humans had a good run and whatever comes next, Man, they can manage it better. That's way too nihilistic, though. That's not a good way to look at things. The only people that are going to save the human race are humans themselves. And that's what Dastardly and Mutley are going to have to do. Their universe, <laughs> it's, it's in a lot of trouble. You see, the president did die because of this. Don't worry, though. The vice president seems cool. He's a cartoon fox, but unlike most politicians, he's taking the end of the world seriously. Also, Dick and Mutley are joined by the other get modern day versions of Clunk and Zilly, who have some strange jokes associated with them that I'm not 100% sold on, but I like these characters nonetheless. Again, there's one or two jokes in this series that don't really work, I think, but it is up to the four of them to save the world. From what, you may ask? Cthulhu. The reason all this stuff was happening is because the U.S. military was playing around with the old ones who coincidentally looked like uh, cartoon characters. There's even the Looney Nomicron. I love this book so much. I don't know if I've made this clear. Uh, this book rules. If I've sold you on this book at all, please go out and read it now because I'm just going to go ahead and spoil the ending. I want to point out one of my favorite bits from the Soul series. Dick never takes off his hospital gown the whole time. I was absolutely positive that this was going to happen at some point, and he didn't. And it's very funny in an Arthur Dent sort of way. Muttley has a family, a normal human family, that might be quite perturbed of him turning into a dog. The crew decided that the only way to save the world from being turned into a big giant cartoon is that they're going to have to fly up and destroy Warpig 1. Initially, they're just going to try and bring it down. But that fails, and the Vulture Squad make the ultimate sacrifice. It crashes right into Warpig 1. They successfully managed to save the world, but by crashing into Warpig 1, their names are completely forgotten. I mean, no one remembers them. The only person who does is Muttley's son who has just a vague memory of his father, because they were transported into the universe of the cartoon. That's right, the original cartoon is in fact a purgatory, where four American heroes are forever trapped. Oh, I see you.
I had a lot of fun with this series. And with a lot of these reboots that they've done, I could actually take or leave them. But I love the version of these characters. Like, Dick here is just a normal dude in a hospital gown riding on the wing of a fighter jet. Listen, listen, listen. Somehow they rebooted Dick Dastardly into kind of a cool character. And the truth of it is, if this was an ongoing, I'd 100% read this. We somehow trap Garth into a purgatory of his own making? Probably not, right?